Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I hope you're having a more or less decent week in this market, but it's time for a market update to see how the trucking industry, the freight market, diesel prices have changed. So let's go ahead and take a look at how volumes, rejections, diesel prices, and capacity have changed in the general market. And then we'll look at the spot market specifically for dry vans, flatbeds, and reefers. And we'll also try to figure out the relatively better areas to stick to in order to get a better rate per mile. Ready? Let's go. All right, so once again, this week, we're going to be looking at the charts right here because my board is still glitching. So starting with capacity, the authorities, I'm gonna be looking away from the camera because I need to see the charts as well. So capacity wise, we lost 276 carriers net week over week, which seems to be the highest net loss since September of this year. Now, the next thing we wanna talk about is the difference between what spot carriers earn versus what contract carriers earn. The dark blue line here shows us in 2024 compared to the light blue in 2023. Now, the higher this line is, the smaller the margin between what contract carriers and spot carriers earn. So currently, contract carriers earn on average 63 cents per mile more than those spot carriers. Why is this important? Because the more contract carriers get squeezed, the more they reject freight that ends up in volume on the spot market, which then skews use the load to truck ratio. All right, now on to volumes in the general market. Same principle, the dark line is 2024, the light blue line is last year. Volume has been trending higher than last year, and right now it is kind of stable. Nothing really is happening with volume, it's higher than last year, that's all I can tell you. But the question is, what is happening with those rejections? Now, Rejections wise this year, right now they're going down if you look at the dark blue line, but they're at 5.07%. Why are rejections important? And this is a question I get under every video, so I'm going to say it again. Rejections is when a contract carrier refuses to haul the contract freight, therefore it ends up as volume on the spot market. The higher the rejection level, in theory, the more volume on the spot market, and when there's more volume on the spot market, it kind of skews the load to truck ratio to the carrier's favor, therefore increasing those rates. All right, last but not least, we have our diesel prices and this is according to actual truck stops across the United States. Diesel prices are on their way down again and currently the average is $3.64 per gallon. Now on to the spot market and we are going to start with those dry vans. Let's take a look. So this data is by FTR Intel. Week over week rates have increased by six cents per mile for dry vans on average on the spot market bringing them to $2 per mile on average. Now, year over year, these rates are up 3.5%, meaning that they're 3.5% higher right now than this time last year. However, of course, comparing to the five-year average, which includes the black swan event called COVID, rates are down 9%. Volume-wise, week over week, those increased by 9.9, .9, almost 10% since last week, and are 2% higher than this time last year. But according to the five-year average, they are down 30%. Now, the next thing we're looking at is market movers. This is the general freight market for dry vans. It's not specific to the spot market. Now, first, let's take a look at the volumes and how they have changed week over week. Anything blue is an increase in volume for vans week over week. Anything red is a decrease. You can see a lot of increases in volumes uh, right now for dry vans, which is pretty good. It's a positive sign. Now, the question is what is happening with those rejections for dry vans week over week? So looking at this chart, it's mostly blue. Yeah, there are some red spots, of course, but for the most part, it's blue, which means more and more contract carriers are starting to reject 
that dry van freight. And you can see in which markets those rejections increased and decreased. Now, taking a look at the general market, we have general freight volumes for dry vans, general rejection rates for dry vans. And when you put them both together, you can figure out which markets have more uh, contract freight that ends up on the spot market. So the top five for vans are Green Bay, Wisconsin, which is up by 1.45% since last week, Atlanta, Georgia, down by 1.59%, Ontario, California, down by 6.39%, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, down by 8.34%, and Elizabeth, New Jersey, which is a new market, so we can't compare it to last week. Now, this just tells us about the volume on the spot market, but using that heat maps, we can figure out what the capacity situation is in each of these markets. So the thing is, you can take a look at every single market. It's either hot or warm, but there's overcapacity around, which means trucks will be deadheading to those markets, diluting the situations and increasing that capacity. So rates will go down with the exception of Ontario, California, Ontario, California, California is surrounded by limited capacity for dry vans. Now let's talk about reefers on the spot market. So week over week, reefers saw a 10 cent increase um, on the spot market to $2.38 per mile on average. Of course, this also includes those short hauls, but still, it's a pretty big jump. And year over year, rates are 4% higher than they were this time last year for reefers. According to the five-year average, of course, they're down 5%. Now, volumes on the spot market for reefers also increased. They increased by almost 16% week over week and are up by 13% compared to this time last year. According to the five-year average, though, we're still down 22%. So now in terms of the market movers, and we're going to look at volumes first, and for the most part, you will see a lot of gray. And this is because sonar, the system that makes these maps, unfortunately doesn't have data for every market. So a lot of the gray gray, not the light gray, the gray gray areas like New Mexico, Colorado, there's just no data for these markets. But for the most part, you can see there's a lot of red, which means volumes have decreased for reefers in the general market. Now, in terms of rejections, if we take a look, there's a lot of blue. While volumes did decrease, there were a lot of increases in rejection levels. So the question is, where do you need to go to grab relatively better opportunities? So using the volumes and rejections from the general market, the markets that have more contract freight going to the spot market are Little Rock, Arkansas, which is a new market. It wasn't there last week. Milwaukee, Wisconsin, which is up by 23.91% in terms of the volume that's hitting the spot market from the contract market. Joliet, Illinois, which is down almost 1%. Joplin, Missouri, which is a new market, wasn't there last week, and Chicago, Illinois, which is down by 8%. Again, this tells us about the volume, but if we wanna take a look at what the rates will be, we have to look at capacity. And the best uh, tool that I have seen is the DAT hot market maps. So here you can see like Little Rock, Arkansas is a cool market. There is actually more capacity there than there are loads. So it's not a good market to go to, even though it's the top market where more contract loads go to the spot market. Everything else is either hot or warm, but there is overcapacity surrounding those markets. So again, this capacity is going to be diluting the situation and of course driving the rates down a little bit. Okay, last but not least, let's talk about flatbeds on the spot market and flatbeds also saw some positive news, not as positive as dry vans and reefers, but we saw a one cent increase on the spot market and the rates are 0.4% higher right now than this time last year. According to the five-year average, they are down 5%. Volumes, however, increased by almost 4% for flatbeds week over week and are 47% higher right now 
than this time last year. But over the five year period, they're down 6%. The fact that rates are so slow to react to the increase in volume tells me that there are more flat bids in the market right now than before. Now, since I don't have any fancy sonar maps uh, for flat beds, we're going to look at the charts I make myself using truck stop data, starting with the load volumes. The darker an area is, the more loads come out of that state. Unfortunately, it is by state. And you can see that Texas, Mississippi, Alabama, basically the South, the Midwest, as well as the West Coast, this is where loads come out of for flatbeds. The question is, what is capacity doing? Well, capacity, same principle. The darker it is, the more flatbed trucks in that state. Capacity is kind of merging more towards the Midwest and East Coast, although some of it is in the South as well, and almost no capacity in the Pacific Northwest. So what happens to the load to truck ratio? Now, anything that is burgundy red, like Texas, this is severe overcapacity. There are two or more trucks per load. So severe overcapacity on average. Anything red is still less than a load per truck. So you're still going to not have as much negotiating power as you would like. Anything peachy orange like South Dakota and Minnesota, that's pretty much equilibrium. That's about one to one and a half loads per truck. Anything that is more yellow like Wyoming, that is slight under capacity. There are between one and a half to two loads per truck, which is interesting that Wyoming, actually Delaware is also one of them, that these markets have that. I'm not sure what's going on. It's possible, by the way, it is possible that one broker has one load and posts it a hundred different times. Times, that does happen. Now, anything light green like Arkansas or Louisiana, this is under capacity. There are about two to three loads per truck. Anything darker green like Alabama or Washington is moderate under capacity. There are between three and 10 loads per truck in these areas. But remember, sometimes brokers can post one load a hundred different times, which does happen uh, very often in the Pacific Northwest. But severe undercapacity here is Mississippi and Oregon. And I can tell you from experience that yes, um, Oregon, especially Mississippi, has always been a better market than everywhere else for flatbeds. Oregon is one of those markets that is skewed because brokers do tend to repost one load many, many times, which skews the situation. But it is true. Oregon does have more loads right now than before, many more loads than before. So yeah, that's the situation this week in the market. As for us, uh, the last week and a half, I would say, were an absolute pain in the neck. I'm not going to use bad words on my channel. I try not to. They have been a disaster uh, the last one and a half weeks. It's been just lying brokers. Most of the mess that we saw was because we were told the wrong information. So yeah, sometimes you have better weeks, sometimes you have worse weeks. Right now we kind of hit a negative patch, I would say, but I'm sure something positive will end up following. It always does. So that's what I have for you today. Anyway, guys, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your week. Stay safe, stay healthy, and keep learning. See you in the next video.